So let's just, let's just take some time and talk about how we got to where we are right now. So, Shar and Henry Krakowski, whose financial planner is Mark Scheffler that you will get to see in a little bit, uh, knew this was coming, met with Mark, asked a number of really, really important questions, and after that meeting, Mark looked at Char and Henry and said, do you think there are other people in the district that might have some of the same questions? And you know what that answer is. So at that time, Henry pulled me aside, met with Mark and his group, and Mark and his group were phenomenal and put together the presentation that you are going to see today. But a hall is not cheap and paying a presenter is not cheap, so after they put together this wonderful presentation, then the question became, well, who's gonna pay for it? At that time, Mark stepped up and he said, I'll pay for it, which was great because AAA didn't have the money to pay for it. So the person that pays the bills gets to send out the invitations. So, all right, Mark, you're paying for it. Uh, who do you want to invite? And at that time, Mark said, um, membership comes with benefits. So at that time, Mark said, if the AAA would pick up their refreshments, I think what we should do is we should reach out to people that are members. So we invited AA Actives, and then we reached out to our friends that are we at Fox Valley Retired. It's good to see many old friends here as well. So all I did was help send out an email. Mark and his group are the ones that did all of the work. So let's give a round of applause to Mark. And at this time, I introduce you to Mark Scheffler. What a great turnout. So I am a 1992 graduate of Lawrence University. I have a degree in music education. I taught three years in the Kenosha Unified School District in, um, in a middle school, a junior high school actually, that uh, isn't even there anymore. It was, um, it was closed down and turned into a private charter school a few years ago. Um, when I was down there, the, one of the first things that, um, for one of the first people that introduced themselves to me was a member of the Kenosha Education Association, the union, and I thought it was really, really great to have that support right away. If any of you ever been to Kenosha, it's a, it's a strong union town, and one of the things that, um, that I told him was I was, this is my second uh, union that I've actually been a member of. I was also Communication Workers of America. My folks were union members too. Um, membership definitely does have its privileges and we're really happy that, um, that Mark and Hank and everybody on the, on the team also wanted to do this as well. So um, a couple of things about um, Appleton Group. We've got some advisory staff um, in the office and I'll just ask them to give a quick wave as well. We have um, Alexander Hunt um, right here is a, a native of Appleton and we have Wendy Heft in the back over uh, representing um, far eastern Outagamie County, actually Manitowoc County, I guess, so she makes a big trek every day. Uh, private client advisors, uh, Wendy's a senior advisor, and then um, Alexander is a member of um, our team as well. Um, I represent the portfolio management side of the firm, and one of the things, the common thread that's gonna go through this is that the long-term care policy is really part of a comprehensive investment plan and financial plan. It's the reason that we're here tonight um, just a quick thing about Appleton Group. The thing that you need to know about us, first and foremost, is that we're not brokers. We don't sell product at all. We are fiduciaries. We are also a vendor um, in the Appleton Area School District. We are a 403B vendor, and we've been proud to do that for quite a number of years as well. Uh, we're right in the heart of downtown Appleton. Um, and we have two things that really just separate us. We have a duty of loyalty and a duty of care. And the way that we're structured, we're obligated to do those things, those two things for all of our private clients and all of our retiree clients as well. And that's why we wanted to do this uh, presentation as well because there's a, a duty of loyalty and a duty of care that really doesn't always um, kind of translate into our industry. Our industry is notorious for selling stuff, selling stuff. We do not sell long-term care insurance. Um, if any of you decide that there's a path that you want to go through uh, with one of the presenters tonight, we make no revenue from that whatsoever. And that's exactly the way that we want it. We do one thing, and that is um, provide financial planning services and investment management services. We're also a member of the community as well. Um, 
You may have seen a lot of the, the support that we've done for Wisconsin Public Television and Wisconsin Public Radio as well. And the local office was kind enough to put together um, uh, some nice uh, public radio and public television stuff as well. We will be um, doing a door prize at the end of the two sessions for two um, nice DVDs that they donated. The uh, Wisconsin from the Air, if any of you have seen those, we'll be doing those as well. So financial security really comes in a number of different forms. And these are the things that we really talk about a lot, investment management, um, strategy selection and monitoring. So how do you put your financial plan together? Tax efficiency, investment expense control, risk analysis, long-term care insurance, uh, Wisconsin Employee Trust Fund pension distribution options. That's something we talk a lot about. How does that get coordinated? Estate planning, retirement income planning, especially Social Security. When do you take Social Security? Do you take the accelerated Wisconsin Employee Trust Fund benefits and then piggyback on Social Security later? We tackle all of those things. So a couple of common um, pitfalls, uh, and it leads us to where we are right now. Um, biggest one, taking on excess risk, experiencing periodic investment losses, which are not adequately compensated over time. This will tie in at the end of the presentation. And the best example of it is if you have um, two different paths that you can go down, each of which rewards you with, a, say, a 5% return, investment A versus investment B. A loss of 8.6% is much better when the market turns against you than a loss of 37. That kind of comes into play a lot, and we see that a lot. People take on excess risks. Uh, excess investment expenses is something that's really, really important as well. Uh, we're about a tenth of the industry average. And then here's where we are tonight. One of the common planning pitfalls that we see is just the assumption that current financial conditions will last forever. We're in a really great market environment right now. We weren't in a great market environment five or six or seven years ago, but today's economy is really dynamic. It's filled with opportunities, but it's also filled with risks, and that's exactly why we're here today. Things change. When the um, Appleton Area School District um, and the uh, Appleton Education Association negotiated in good faith together to come up with a long-term care policy, it was set in, in place years ago, but now conditions have changed. And we're to a point where it's just no longer viable to do. One of the biggest mistakes that we see is people making the assumption that things just don't change, that things continue to go on forever and ever and ever. You're going to hear in the news a lot lately that markets are at all-time highs, and they are. The last time that the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ made, uh, made all-time highs at the same time was the fall of 1999. It took another 13 years for the S&P to get back to break even. Things don't always stay on, on course. Things are really good right now, and this is a nice opportunity for us to kind of stay, take stock of that. So we're talking long-term care insurance tonight. That's the big reason that we're here. But again, it goes into a much bigger conversation that we can help with as well. Appleton Group does financial planning. We do uh, 403Bs, we do 401Ks. We don't do long-term care insurance, so in these cases, we partner with outside experts. The guy you're gonna be talking, hearing from just a second ago is the long-term care expert in the state of Wisconsin uh, by the name of Romeo Robbie. He'll be coming up in a second. We also have uh, Paul Northway, Executive Vice President, Chief Lending Officer from American National Bank that'll talk to you about some financing options for helping you if you choose to go with option two, which is the lump sum piece. So I've got a nice introduction for Romeo. He wrote it himself. It's very nice. <laughs> Romeo Robbie is known as the long-term care guy. And in fact, it's really kind of funny because his website is thelongtermcareguy.com. He's worked exclusively in financial planning in the long-term care industry for 23 years. I first ran into Romeo when he was doing continuing education for people in my industry who want to learn more about long-term care insurance. He speaks at many national conferences and he actually does training uh, for um, people in my financial profession in other states as well. Um, he's got strategies for people who are planning ahead for long-term care insurance, strategies for the do not plan ahead and now need care, and he's fully up to speed on all of the options that are available to you with the change in the uh, current long-term care plan through the district. Um, he's here to explain those different options. We'll have a time, chance for uh, questions and answers um, at the very end as well with Romeo, with Paul, and with myself as well. So I'd like to introduce you, give a warm welcome please to Romeo Robbie. Wow, a financial planning firm that puts together a seminar for somebody they don't make a nickel on. 
Have you ever seen that before? I'd give them a hand of applause, please. What should you do? We're gonna talk about what you should do, what you could do, what you shouldn't do, what is possible. All kinds of things are possible, but first we're gonna talk a little bit about long-term care itself. The problem is, there are 10,000 of us baby boomers turning 65 every day in America. I'm 67, my day came two years ago. We've got 15 more years of us. And the problem with long-term care is caused by the Catholics. Seriously. Remember they all had 12 kids when we were growing up? <laughs> That's enough to care for us in our old age. I'm Luther and I had three. How many of you had more than five? Show of hands. Okay, one good Catholic in the whole crowd. <laughs> There's too many of us, too many of us. We're living too long. We're not dying on time. I am the perfect example of what should happen. I'm overweight. I, I don't smoke, I should smoke. If I was overweight and smoked, I would tip over dead of a heart attack, that's cheap. Men are often quick and cheap, but we're not going into that either. Um, <laughs> the problem is we're lingering too long and it's you healthy ones that are causing the problem because you just don't die. <laughs> and so we need help and that help is expensive and it's getting more and more expensive. Things that used to kill us leave us now impaired. Cancer 15 years ago was not a problem for long-term care insurance companies. It is now, because back then it killed you. Now it doesn't kill you anymore, and when you linger, that's expensive. That is a problem. The insurance companies, all of them, your homeowners, your car insurance, every kind of insurance, they used to earn big money on their nest egg. Have some of you noticed that your CDs are not earning 7% anymore? The insurance companies, billions of dollars of assets they have earned, set aside to pay claims with, they're not earning squat either. And that's a problem for the long-term care companies as it is for all their types of insurance. The costs of care are increasing. We're gonna talk about this to some degree tonight. The cost of long-term care services historically have been going up at five to 6% per year. Now the last eight to 10 years have been the worst economic situation this country has seen since the Great Depression. Interest rates are ridiculously low, people are unemployed, and some of them will work for a minimum wage job changing bedpans and diapers and taking care of older people. And now as the economy picks up, they want better jobs paying more money, and that's raising the cost of long-term care. Going forward, it's going to get a lot worse. Minimum wage is doubling. McDonald's employees are wanting $15 minimum wage. Long-term care is minimum wage workers in bricks and mortar. There's no medical costs, but that minimum wage is going up. I'm getting postcards in the mail addressed to resident where I live in Green Bay, saying, please come to work for our assisted living facility. No experience necessary, we will train you. What happens in any industry when you can't hire enough workers? What happens to wages? They go up, that's a problem. The New York Times did a study a year and a half ago. They said by 2020, there'll be more Americans working as caregivers than work in retail. How many millions work in Walmarts? And that's not the only retailer in this country, is it? There's a lot of people needed, we don't have enough of them. So let's talk a little bit, in addition to inflation, about, and then by the way, that 5% compound inflation that's in your paperwork that you all got, is very, very critical. I have never offered a long-term care policy when I sell them, and I do half my business with people who can't even buy policies anymore to help them, but that's absolutely essential. I've never had one sold without that on it. It's absolutely critical. But the next thing before I go on to my next slide and our three choices is how to choose benefits. This is what I teach all over the country. You don't need enough insurance to cover the entire bill for long-term care. I'm gonna use me as an example. My wife and I live in Green Bay in a house. We have a cottage in Door County. It's really a trailer. I keep three snowmobiles up there, and that's integral to my story. My wife has a new car. I have a three-year-old car. I've got the three snowmobiles. I've got a motorcycle she doesn't like. We've got a motorhome she won't drive. We take five or six vacations a year. And if I'm laid up and can't travel, you're a woman, I'll ask you. You sat up front so get to pick, and you just like school. Is my wife keeping three snowmobiles? No. Hell no. Is she keeping my older car? Absolutely. 
Is she keeping the motorcycle? Is she keeping the motorhome she won't drive? No. We're not going to Branson for her birthday in April to, to go uh, golfing. We're not going on a cruise in the wintertime. We're not going on vacations anymore. So the money we use for fun, and everybody has some fun, can be redirected towards the cost of long-term care when it happens. There are less boats, motorcycles, snowmobiles, toys, campers, trucks. Of all the couples here, how many couples, in addition to a car for each person, has an extra pickup truck? Show of hands. Raise them up high, don't be embarrassed. A lot, of, a lot of families have this extra truck the guy has. Do you need that when he can't drive anymore? No, my brother-in-law can't drive anymore. He's in a wheelchair. His wife is selling all those collector cards. So all that money can go towards care. And if you have some life savings, and even if you don't want to use it up, you can use the interest that it throws off to also help pay for long-term care. So most people don't need anywhere near as much insurance as they initially think when they first start thinking about this. That is critical to keep in mind during this presentation tonight. Number one, you have three options. This is the green one on the left side of your sheet. Did anybody bring their sheets with them? Good. You're teachers, you didn't bring your paperwork to school? What the heck? <clears throat> it's called non-forfeiture benefit reduced paid up. This is something that Congress foisted on the industry many years ago. And they said, if for some reason you're going to drop your plan, they will let you take the premiums paid thus far and put them in a shoebox, meaning no interest. And if you do need long-term care many years later, they'll use those dollars to pay the claim. So in your paperwork, some of you who had the coverage for 120 months, that's 10 years for the other than the math teachers, um, you have that as a default. If you do nothing, you will get a paid up benefit of so many thousand dollars of total benefit, which is not really relevant. It's how many dollars per day or how many dollars per month, because when you need care, you must pay the bill each month. If you have a mortgage, you have to pay the bill each month. You can't go to the bank and say, look, I can't pay for the next six months, but I'll make it up later. They don't like that. Am I right? We have bankers over here, they agree. So it's important to know how much benefit you have under that option. The benefit will not grow any larger. You cannot make premium payments. You are stuck with it. Maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing, depending how big it is. But the worst part of it is, at 5% compounded, there is no compounding on that option. Your benefit does not go up. And built into your other option is a 5% inflation factor every year. In 15 years time, your benefit will double. In 30 years, it will quadruple. Now, does anyone know what a nursing home costs around here? 6,000 6, I hear. Any other numbers? Nine. Nine. 85. We're getting closer. I go to the nursing home administrators' meetings. I do not believe the Money Magazine or the insurance company's median price guesstimates for this area. They tell me that around here it's $10,000 a month. But I have good news, only 15% of long-term care is done in a nursing home. Nursing homes are now the recovery room of the hospital. If you're in the hospital for three days and you come out, they ship you to a nursing home, you finish recovering, Medicare will pay for that short stay because it's a lot cheaper for them to pay for a three or four hundred dollar a night nursing home bed than a three or four thousand dollar a night hospital bed. So that's only for short term recovery stays. Most long term care is done in your own home or in the assisted living facilities, which are nice places. How many of you have visited somebody in an assisted living facility? For the men who haven't, I just want to fill this in. You have something to look forward to. Most of them built now have pools and or hot tubs. Almost everyone has happy hour on Thursday and Friday afternoon from two to four, two free drinks for everyone in doctors allows them. And there's eight women for every two men. <laughs> hot tubs, liquor, and women. It's not such a bad deal. Home care is similar. Assisted living starts at $3,000 a month. If you don't need care, you just go there to live. $4,500 is a median, they tell me. And if you're there for dementia, 
$6,500 a month. That's the most expensive assisted living facility cost generally is dementia. And by 65 years old, one in eight has Alzheimer's. By 75, one in four. By 85, one in two. Seventh leading cause of the death in America and the only leading cause of death without a cure. And it's very common. So the problem is with the reduced paid up, you have no inflation built into it so that benefit will get smaller over time. Now, if I see a assisted living at $6,500 today, in 15 years it's $13,000 a month, and in 30 years it's double that again, which is a lot of money, which sounds ridiculously large, so let's go backwards 30 years to 1986. How much did a brand new Ford Mustang LX cost without dickering, sticker price in 1986? Google told me, I know the number, $7,669. What does a new Ford Mustang cost today? A lot more? Inflation is a problem. So that's the concern with that option. Uh, you get a reduced benefit based on how long your premiums were paid. The benefit will not keep up with inflation going forward, meaning when your income and assets are not enough to make up the difference as the cost gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you will end up using your assets and spending down to Medicaid. I'll give you some numbers on that in just a little bit. Let's move on to option number two. This is not a bad option at all. Available to all who have had 120 monthly premiums paid by the employer, that's 10 years, you have an option of buying it out and having it paid up with one fell swoop. All you have to do is write a check. It's a big check for some of you. $50,000, $60,000, but where can you buy such coverage for one payment of $60,000? Nowhere else. Actually, it's not a bad deal. You will have 5% compound inflation. Your benefit will go up every year to keep pace with the increasing cost of long-term care services. That's good. Your benefit, your total payout does. You have a 4.1 year long benefit you can collect for 4.1 years on that policy. For most of us, that's long enough. I've had two mother-in-laws in my life. Both of them needed long-term care for 12 years. That's unusually long. That's not the norm. The daily benefit is huge, 330 some dollars a day. That's bigger than most of you need. Unfortunately, they will not let you cut the policy down in half or a third or a fourth or whatever. It's a whole thing or nothing. That's a bit of a bummer, but it's still a very good price. The policy never pays 100% of the cost. No matter how big the benefit is, it only pays three-fourths of the cost. You will always pay one-fourth, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Now, they give you an option instead of one lump sum payment to spread it out in three payments. The first one is 70%. That's most of it. And then the other two are small ones. That's a horrible deal. Because if you do that and you make the first 70% payment and you or your spouse needs long-term care, you're only getting partial benefit because you haven't paid the whole premium and now you can't pay the rest of it. Let me put it to you this way. If you bought a new car, and the car insurance would be cheaper next year, would you drive that car a year before you put car insurance on it? You're a safe driver. I'm a safe driver. It's been years since I've had an accident. Why not save the money? It's a bad, bad deal. I understand, in fact, I learned when I got here tonight, we have an option, op, first day with a new tongue, we, we have an option available from a couple of gentlemen over here of taking that single payment and financing it for you, which I would strongly encourage you to do, and I've got nothing to do with them, but it just is in your best interest. Number three, conversion. This is horrible. Don't do it. Don't take it. According to the chart, which I have, that's a pink option on the right. The premium will have inflation on it. The price will go up every year. They predict 10 to 15% every year. It'll be paid up when premiums have been paid for 30 years and you are 65 and you are retired.
but the premium goes up 10 to 15 percent every year, and if you drop out before that end, all three things, you lose everything. It is a horrible choice. It may sound okay now, but in a few years when it's doubled in price and tripled and quadrupled in price, you'll have to do something. Pluses and minuses. Pluses, well, actually kind of a minus. The daily benefit is huge. It's bigger than 99% of you need. That's just the way it is, unfortunately. The policy offered, except the reduced paid out, that middle one with a lump sum, does include the absolutely essential 5% automatic increase in your benefits. That is very, very true. Who thought gas would be selling for three, four dollars a gallon? You know, back when you were in high school, imagine somebody sold you a gasoline insurance policy that said if you're ever broke, we will send you a check for your gasoline. And today you are broke and you file a claim and they approve it and they send you a check for 29 cents. <laughs> How much good would that do? You gotta have that, gotta have it. Nursing homes do run up to $10,000 a month in costs, but very few people use them. Of the 15% of people who go to nursing homes, most of those are the short-term recovery stays after being in a hospital where you simply finish recovering in the nursing home at lower cost. The people who are living there are on Medicaid, which we'll get to shortly. Home care can be any amount, but generally below what assisted living is. 4.1 years is adequate for many people. Who knows how long we're gonna need care for. Hopefully, I will never need to use my long-term care policy. In fact, somebody asked me my plan the other day and I said, I wanna stay healthy until 99 and then be shot by a jealous husband. <laughs> my wife says, good luck with that. But a guy can dream, can't you? For the accelerated paid up, you're offered an option to pay the single premium in three payments. As I said, don't do it. It's a horrible deal. What are all the alternatives? There's always alternatives. You can go without and hope you'll never need care. Health and Human Services in Washington, D.C. says that by age 65, 70% of us will need long-term care. I wouldn't bet against those odds. It may be for a few days, or a few weeks, or a few months, or a few years. But for most people, it'll bankrupt you. Your children are not going to leave their jobs, move home, and take care of you. Who's gonna make their mortgage payment, pay for their minivan payments, raise the grandkids? It isn't going to happen. Medicaid, Medicaid sounds like Medicare, but it's different. It starts with an M. Medicaid is welfare. It will pay once you're broke, and here are the limits. If you are a single person, Medicaid will pay for your long-term care when you have spent everything down to $2,000. Checking, savings, IRA, 401k, 403b, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, annuities, farm, business, cottage, cars, everything. You get to keep your socks and underwear, your barco lounger, your wedding ring, and that's about it. You get to keep $45 a month out of whatever income source or sources you have to pay for socks and underwear and more toothpaste. Medicaid makes up the difference, basically. You must cash in your life insurance. If your life insurance pays out more than $1,500, which will not get you down below the frost line in Wisconsin, you must cash it in, which means your kids are gonna pass the hat to pay for your burial, unless you put some money in a prepaid burial trust, which Medicaid allows. Silly, but it's a government rule, not my rule. If you're married, would you be my wife this evening? Just for a little bit. Yeah. We're gonna have kids. I wanna warn you. What is your first name? Cindy. Cindy? I forget my wife's name, so I'll call you a dear. How about that? <laughs> Cindy is my wife. Cindy gets to keep the house up to $828,000. I have to take my name off of it. She gets to keep one vehicle, a brand new Cadillac, a 78 Valari with fine Corinthian leather, a Harley Davidson, or a Winnebago, doesn't matter, one license vehicle. Do you drive? Do you ride motorcycles? Yeah. You do, okay. Then it could be the Harley then. She gets to keep half of our savings that we had together, but the biggest her half can be is $119,220. Now, currently in Wisconsin, the at-home spouse's IRA account, or 403B account, 
is not counted as an asset. However, have you heard rumors of government shortfalls? Most states have overturned that. Wisconsin hasn't yet. Don't bank on it. She gets to keep a maximum of $119,220. If all we had was $75,000 of savings, she'd get to keep half, but she doesn't have to go below $50,000 in Wisconsin. Actually, in most of the states, it's $23,000. We're just generous in Wisconsin. And lastly, you can keep about $2,500 a month of income. I get to keep $2,000, and that's it. I'm in the hole. I'm being cared for by Medicaid. They're paying the bill every month, and they keep track. When I die, they total up what they paid for my care, and they let her keep the house and the car, but when she dies, it doesn't go to our children. It goes back to the state of Wisconsin to pay them back. Medicaid is basically a loan, letting you keep your house and use it so you're not on welfare too. Medicaid is welfare. It's not good. I wouldn't bank on it. The biggest problem with Medicaid is it pays far less than what it costs to keep you and so the facilities or the home care services earn far less. In fact, they lose money on your care. My partner in my office is named Kathy. She is just in the process of moving her mother, Mequon, to an assisted living facility in Green Bay. And they visited all kinds of them. We have had at least three assisted living facilities built in Green Bay every year for the last 10 years. They're going up like mushrooms because we're getting old. Well, not like mushrooms, but we're getting old. Every single one wanted a financial statement before they talked to her. How long can your mom pay her bill? Because once she's on Medicaid, we lose money on her. Medicaid is not a good solution. Other alternatives. There are new products out, life insurance, and even annuities that have a long-term care rider. And they'll tell you, don't buy long-term care insurance. It's expensive, you may never use it, buy this life insurance instead, and if you need long-term care, we'll give you 2% of the death amount each month to pay for long-term care. One way or another, you're gonna collect. Does that sound pretty good? It does. It does sound very good. The only problem is, there's no inflation. What good will $2,000 or $5,000 do 20 years from now? Will your Social Security make up an eight, ten, twelve thousand dollar shortfall? I don't think so. Unless you need very care very soon, it's not going to work very well. There's a couple of them that do have inflation on the long-term care benefit, but they are prohibitively expensive. So let's look at a replacement policy, which I am not suggesting. I just want to show you for alternative. Bear in mind, when you got the policy you have now, you were younger, you were healthier, and you were probably better looking. If you want to buy it today, you're older. I'm not going to go into anything else. <clears throat> People that buy long-term care insurance today don't generally, most of them, buy enough to cover a nursing home because only 15% of care is done there, and a lot of that are the short-term recovery stays after a hospital stay. And just like flood insurance, how many of you have flood insurance in your house? Not very many. You could all have a flood. I mean, Noah did build an ark down in Tennessee just recently. But you think it won't happen, so you don't insure for it. And many people only get enough insurance so that with their income and their interest and a little bit of insurance, they can afford to cover home care and or assisted living, which covers the majority of the risk. When long-term care is needed, your lifestyle will change considerably. We talk about less toys. So here's an example. A 65-year-old who can contribute out of their pocket $2,400 a month towards the cost of long-term care when it's needed. We haven't gotten to insurance yet. They can pay that much out of pocket when they don't have the boats and the motorcycles, etc. Out of their income and interest towards a typical $4,500 a month cost of care needs only an additional $2,100 a month from insurance. That's $70 a day. That's a much smaller benefit than you're talking about here tonight. A 65-year-old for less than $2,000 a year can buy a 10-year benefit, not a 4.1 year, of $70 a day, including the all-important 5% compound inflation built in, and it's even cheaper if you're a couple. And let's say you pay that premium at 65 until 85. You've paid $40,000 in insurance premiums, and you could collect $852,000 over 10 years 
because of the built-in inflation factor. It doesn't have to be expensive. Here's another example of a younger couple, two people, 55 years old, that want $100 a day, which is $3,000 a month. 90-day deductible, meaning the first 90 days you pay for it, they have the inflation built in. 10 years each cost $2,100 a year each. A six-year benefit, $1,947 each. A four-year benefit, $1,688 each. A two-year benefit, less than $100 a month. Single people pay 5% more without the marital discount. All the companies give discounts to married couples because if you love me, you'll take care of me longer before you call and hire help, won't you? I, on the other hand, heard about this 24-year-old hottie who comes around to help me give a bath, and I'm thinking, yeah, sign me up. Okay, no. <laughs> decisions, decisions. You may each have a different amount to pay. I have an example here of one person. Everybody has different numbers. The reduced paid up has no cost at all. My motto in life is if it's free, take two. If you go to the grocery store and they give out samples of beer, take two. If you go to Line and Kugel's Brewery, they will give you two samples, but that's all. <laughs> you must choose very soon. If you're going to choose the middle option, the blue one, the single payment is by far the best deal. And I understand they've got some folks who are going to talk about how to finance that, which I'd strongly urge you to do, and do it in one payment. The conversion coverage, where you pay a premium that gets bigger by 10 to 15% every year, you know that's not going to work. It's just going to be unaffordable. If you're considering replacement coverage, a guided discussion of how much or how little and why is beneficial before purchasing. I have a lot of meetings in my office with people who bought long-term care coverage, some results, and something happened. Some of the people who are here tonight, a couple of them have already con contacted me and come to see me in Green Bay because they heard me on WHBY radio. Federal employees who bought a, a government-sponsored program from their employer have had price increases. And in many cases, they bought too much or too little, and I suggest appropriate coverage and maybe reducing their premium. Unfortunately, you can't do that in yours. It's all or nothing. But some help in choosing it, I liken it to going to the drugstore. If you didn't go to the doctor first and went to the drugstore and picked the pills off the shelf, you get the wrong ones and kill yourself. That's why they made doctors. For additional guidance, there's a good website from the government, longtermcare.gov. It's not from an insurance company, it's not from me, it's from the better federal government talking about long-term care insurance. My website is below it, thelongtermcareguide.com. I got that when I go to meetings as a speaker, the Financial Planning Association, attorneys groups, and they say, you're the long-term care guy. So like the dog who thinks his name is Down Boy, I said, that's my website. My blog will also help, and there's my contact information. And now I'll turn it over to you. If you have questions, I'll answer them generally. We've got a few minutes for questions. You might want to take this microphone around to the people with questions, because I talk pretty darn loud on my own. I'll just repeat the questions as well. So we're going to break this up into a couple of different sections then. So question for Romeo first, and then we'll go on to the next. And um, we'll deal mainly on how you finance these different options. Hank. In terms of option three, the conversion one, uh, I'm not 100% certain of this, but at the last meeting that the trust put on, I believe the answer was, if you select option three, the conversion one, if you're into it for a couple of months or a couple of years, and then you decide you can't afford it any longer, then you lose all benefits. That is correct. So that's another reason to not choose option three. You're guaranteed the pro rata at a minimum, so don't gamble by picking option three. Just like I said, excellent, thank you. Smart man, he thinks like I do. Next question. By the way, I, I, I think I'm allowed to mention that if Anybody has specific questions that they don't want to ans ask in this room for everybody else to hear, uh, Wendy and the group with the financial planners, these folks, have made arrangements that you can schedule appointments with them, and I will meet with you and just help you go over your situation and figure out what is best for you. And you can schedule with them when you leave. Yes, sir, in the back. Um, if someone chose option one, can they then supplement it with another company's yeah, insurance? Which one to pick up first? How does that work? 
They, yeah, well, that's a good question. Uh, they could supplement with another company or another policy, but it's a bit awkward because this benefit is not going to get any bigger. You could add another one on top of it, and it will inflate, but this one won't inflate. That can work in some situations. If you are in a position where you have enough income and interest on assets to pay a good chunk of the cost of long-term care, then option one may be enough, knowing that your next nest egg will be growing at, what, what can people expect to earn on their nest eggs this year and next year? What's the stock market gonna do? Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna change, change, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we usually aim at around five to five and a half. Five, five and a half percent. So if you have enough income and interest that you can cover a good portion of it, number one may fit okay by itself without even adding another one, or you might add a little bit to it if you felt it necessary. Okay. Yes? You have a special deal. Yeah, what's, what's your recommendation for us to have? The special deal is that the policy, instead of paying 75% of the bill, will pay 100% of your bill, and you don't have to add any money to it. Most long-term care insurance, if you buy a policy that pays $5,000 a month towards your care, and you need an extra 2,000, you add the extra 2,000. If your care costs 4,000, that $5,000 policy pays the whole bill. In most of you who are not both teachers in the plan, your plan only pays 75% of the bill no matter what. But if you're married as this gentleman is and you both have it, you have that feature that it will pay 100% of the bill up to its dated limit, which is huge. In which case, take option two, write the check, be happy. If you need financing, they'll handle that for you. That two, $253,000 or just one? I have to see your paperwork, everyone is different. Is that it for now? Oh, one more. There's no medical underwriting on any of the three options, right? That is correct, no medical underwriting. If you choose to replace it with something, there is medical underwriting, you've gotta be able to pass it. However, let me give you a quick question. If you had a heart attack five years ago, do you think it would be difficult to get long-term care insurance today? No, the next one will kill you and they like death. <laughs> They want you to pay your premium for 30 years and drop dead. That's what they're hoping for. <laughs> but if you've had a stroke, that's a problem. If you have diabetes, as I do, unfortunately, you are 65% more likely to end up with Alzheimer's. So there's lots of things that you wouldn't think would be a problem that are, and some things that you would think wouldn't be a problem, like a sore shoulder, that are a problem. So it depends on your health. Yes? Yes, but you only have partial coverage on that new car for the first year if you do that. And if you have an accident, you can be in trouble. For two months. Because if I pay by November 29th or whatever the date is, and then I pay... Then you'll have two-thirds of the coverage until you make the third payment a year later. No, in, in a few months. It would be like... But there are three payments. But I, I don't know that you have to do three payments. I think you could do two payments. It, it, it seems to indicate three payments. So if you make one now, you make one in January, if, if you can do that, that'll get you two-thirds coverage until a year from now you get all the coverage. And yes, in, instead of taking all out and paying all taxable this year, talk to them about financing it and compare the two. They are the experts on that part of it, I'm not. Yes? That's a good question and I can answer it. All insurance companies are backed up with reinsurance where they take big claims and have another company take over for them, but that's not really the answer. You've all heard of the FDIC that insures banks? You bankers correct me if I'm wrong on this, but when a, when a bank goes under, does the government bail them out and give them all the money? No, they go to a bigger bank and say, take them over and we'll be nice to you. Isn't that what generally happens? Same thing happens with insurance companies. Anybody heard the name Michael Milliken? The junk bond king? He was the investment company for a company called Executive Life back in the 80s when junk bonds crashed and the company went belly up. 
and the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, we have one in Wisconsin, every state has one, got together, got a bigger company to take them over, everybody was made whole. That's generally what happens. And if all the insurance companies go bankrupt, we're all in the same soup kitchen line anyways. Behind them, there was another one. No? Yes? If you work for the district less than 10 years, does it even matter? I mean, will you get anything? Yes. If you've worked less than 10 years, you have the option of conversion, which is no good. So essentially, you're correct. Nothing. I don't believe that's an option. I don't, I don't think that's an option. They are very, I've had many people over the years from other school directs that have come to me and said, we've got this option, I don't want a big like, lump sum check. Can I cut it down to a small benefit that's better for me? Oh, the question is, uh, would you repeat it to me, please? She was asking, uh, she doesn't quite get the 120. I know of an instance with an educator that is one month shy. But they, they said they could pay that one month. If you're a couple months short of the 120 months, can you, uh, you can call the company and ask them. I don't believe so, because in the past, with other school districts, districts, I've had people come to me and say, this would be perfect if the benefit I could cut in half. And we call them and they say, it's all or nothing. That's it. We're very firm. Yeah, they're very strict and very guidelines, that's it. So there's your answer. The other meeting they said you could. The other meeting they said you could. Ask them. Well, yeah. If you're concerned, ask them. Any more? One more question. Yes, sir. I believe the insurance company is called Bankers United. It's a good insurance company. They've sold other policies individually. I've sold their policies. It's a good company, not to be afraid of at all. Can they resign or resell it, or can they change it back? Can they somebody else they get a chance to do it? It's always possible that an insurance company may sell their book of business to somebody else. My own policy that I have was, was they stopped selling it years ago, and eventually they sold the business to a company which happened to be based right in Green Bay, Wisconsin, called Humana which is a health insurance company, but they have my long-term care insurance company now. We have had 10,000 manufacturers of automobiles in America. Now we have three or four or whatever it is. And if one of them goes under, they may sell it to somebody else. That is actually not uncommon and not a bad thing. All right. Big round of applause, please, for Romeo Bob. So how do you pay? So there was a question about taxation. There was a question about um, would it make sense to do the 70% option? Would it make sense from a tax standpoint? Appleton Group specializes in doing financial planning. So one of the things that we do is try to figure out how, once you've decided which benefit you're going to go with or which opportunity to go with, how do you finance that piece of it? So under, again, just review option number one is a non-forfeiture. There are no premiums that are due. There's nothing to finance. It's already paid up. Option two, accelerated pay up. You can choose to pay either as a one-time lump sum, which again, Romy recommended, um, or over the three annual payments, which is not recommended. Either way, you have limited options. You have to come up with that, that, lump, that lump sum payment somehow. You can pay it out of existing investment or savings assets, which could be a 403B, could be personal savings, trust, inheritance, spousal, 401K that was rolled over, spousal 403B that was rolled over, or you can finance the lump sum through a lender. Lump sum considerations. First thing, consider taxes. Where you pull it from is going to be really, really important. IRAs, 403Bs, 401Ks, maybe with a spouse, and so forth. Withdrawals are generally taxable as regular income. So let's use the $50,000 example. You take the lump sum payment out, $50,000. You're going to pay regular income tax on that approximately a 15% federal rate, probably six again for state, so you're talking about a 20% additional that you're gonna have to pay to the $50,000 withdrawal from the IRA. 
In addition, if you're under 59 and a half, there's a 10% early withdrawal penalty. The 403B is not available if you are still working. 401K is not available if you are still working as a lump sum option. You might investigate a loan possibly from something like that. Uh, Roth IRAs. Uh, just to back up real quick, that taxation. Since you'd be taking the dollars out of this year to pay for it this year, you have to be 59 and a half this year. So you take your age, whatever month you're in, add six months. If it falls in this year, you're 59 and a half this year. Okay? It's not April 15th. It's when you take it out. Roth IRAs. Withdrawals of contributions. A lot of people don't know this. Withdrawals of contributions to a Roth IRA are tax-free. They can be taken out at any point in time for any reason. That's not true in a Roth 401k, but it is true in a Roth IRA. Withdrawals of any growth, though, have to be kept in, still subject to taxes and early withdrawal penalty if you take them out under 59 and a half again this year. So let's say you put 25,000 over the years into your Roth IRA and now it's worth $30,000. You can take the 25,000 out at any point in time tax-free. The 5,000 is tax-free if you're over 59 and a half. It's not tax-free if you're under 59 and a half. And again, that's the same thing for this tax year. Individual joint accounts, this is actually really easy. If you have the, the assets inside of a joint account or an individual account, you can withdraw the assets right from there. Generally, there's minimal tax impact to that. You've been paying taxes as you go. If you have an appreciated asset, you're gonna have to consider whether or not you're gonna be paying capital gains tax on that or not. And there's always some strategies we can help you with to figure out can you offset those gains with losses from other areas perhaps. But generally, the limit, it's limited tax liability on withdrawals from individual or joint accounts. And oftentimes that also would come into a trust as well. Lump sum considerations. Romeo talked a lot about inflation, right? Well, there's a cost to taking lump sum out of your investment pool right now. And here's what it is. If you take out $20,000 from lump sum, again, this is not assuming any taxes on this, so it's just the lump sum 20,000. In 20 years, compounded at 5%, your $20,000 has now cost you $53,000. That's your opportunity cost. Again, the money that you're pulling out of that pool is going now to pay for the long-term care. So that's taken out. It's not available to finance lifestyle. It's not available to finance trips and travel and retirement and that kind of thing. $30,000 compounds up to almost $80,000. $40,000 compounds a little over $105,000. And then a $50,000 lump sum compounds up to $132,000. So that's your opportunity cost, again, at a 5% rate. Financing options. Again, we're not a bank. So what we do is we bring in experts, people who are. And uh, we've brought in Paul Northway, um, an associate from um, American National Bank. And Paul's gonna talk to us a little bit about how financing might be an attractive option. It's not for everybody, but it could possibly be a nice option for those that have um, equity. And he's gonna talk a little bit about that. We're in a unique period of history right now where interest rates on your CDs are almost nothing, right? Well, interest rates on lending, remarkable as this sounds, interest rates continue to go down and down and down. One of the things we talk a lot about, the Fed wants to raise rates. The Fed is very interested in raising rates. They tried that last year. Theoretically, all rates on the planet should have gone up. They didn't. They're almost, um, a lot of them have actually gone negative. There's about $10 trillion, can you believe this? $10 trillion of debt around the globe that is actually paying negative interest rates. In a European bank and a Japanese bank, you pay them to keep your money safe and you're gonna get back less than what you, what you put in. In the US, rates are still <laughs> way too high. 10-year uh, treasury rate is now about 1.6%. Did you ever think in your life you'd be saying that 1.6% is way too high compared to everything else? So Paul's gonna come up and talk a little bit about financing options and um, he represents American National Bank. So warm welcome please for Paul. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Romeo, uh, wow, great job, and we've sure, certainly learned a lot tonight, and I don't know how I had to follow up Romeo, that's not an easy task. Um, that, that whole topic of interest rates, I really do not want to experience uh, having to tell someone that they have to pay me to put money on deposit at the bank. It's bad enough having to have that conversation about how low savings rates are right now, but that's where we are at. That 10-year treasury rate 
has continued to drive down the interest rates on mortgage products. So as frustrating as it is to see low interest rates on savings products and, and certificates of deposits, things like that, the good news right now is if you are going to borrow money for any purpose, this is really historically one of the best times ever. The 30-year fixed rate uh, interest rate on, on uh, home mortgages has hit an all-time low. So every situation is very different, and everyone in the room's got a, a, a really unique situation relative to how they want to try to tackle this long-term care topic. We're just here to offer you some ideas relative to option number two, the prepay option, and how you could potentially go about financing it. American National Bank is a community bank. We're locally owned. We're headquartered right here in Appleton. If anybody knows where Mary's place is, we're on the corner of Richmond and Marquette, so I'm sure at some point everybody's been right next door to us. Uh, what does it mean to be local? All of our decisions are made right here in Appleton. Chances are, if you, can, if you came into the bank and you sat down with someone like Brent or myself, that's who's actually going to approve the loan. If you make a payment, it's right to our bank right here in Appleton. If you have to call for any kind of a question, anything you need, guess what? We answer the phone. You're going to chat with someone right here in Appleton. So that's what differentiates us from a lot of others, uh, whether it's a home equity loan, whether it's a mortgage. Just like a lot of banks and a lot of credit unions, we offer fixed rate mortgages. What do banks do and, and credit unions do with those fixed rate mortgages? Most often, they sell them, right? If you take out a long-term fixed rate mortgage with our bank, after the fact, the service is with us. If you have an escrow, you make your escrow payments with us. If you need to get an escrow check cut, you come into the bank and get that taken care of with us. So very local, very hands-on, very unique customer service approach in the world of big banking right now. We take care of it all right here in Appleton. Uh, relative to financing options, if you're looking at number two, the prepaid option, I won't go into a lot of detail just because every situation is different. Brent's got a, a bunch of handouts that he, he'll, he'll leave out. Maybe we'll put them out on, uh, on top of the piano in the lobby. And if you want to grab some afterward, you can do that. Uh, it gives you a few, uh, few ideas. It's got our phone number, so you're able to contact us. I think this whole presentation is going to be emailed back out to everybody, so you'll have our contact info there as well. But there's a lot of flexibility, and I guess I'll leave it you know, at, at that to, to impress that as a point. Because every situation is different, there was an example about what if I, you know, what if I wanted to um, fund the 70% and then wait and, and do another piece of it the following year, even though it's only a couple months out. Romeo made the, uh, the point that there's still some risk relative to, I think the example was, is insuring the car. Uh, you, you can go ahead and borrow the money, let's say on a home equity line or a home equity loan, you can borrow that money and make the payment now, the prepaid option now, have all of the coverage, have everything locked in, and then if, if through consultation with your financial advisor, your tax advisor, that it makes sense over the next two years, the next three years, the next five years to take distributions from, let's say, a retirement account, you can pay that line off, that loan off, as quick as you'd like. There's never any prepayment penalties on any of these products, whether it's a home equity line, a home equity loan, or if it's an actual fixed rate product uh, on a first mortgage on your home, you can pay those off at any time. So you have a lot of flexibility. Uh, we can tailor things if, uh, if you want to take a distribution annually from a retirement account. We can set it up that you would just pay interest only on that, on that loan, on that line of credit throughout the year. And then that once a year that you take a, a distribution from a retirement plan, then you can make the annual payment. So you don't have to have a, a larger principal and interest payment each month. You could set it up to have the flexibility of a lower payment throughout the year and then pull a, pull a payment or a distribution out of your retirement plan and then turn around and make that that big principal reduction on your, on your line or your loan. So again, a lot, of, a lot of opportunities, a lot of options, a lot of different ways to do this, literally a handful of ways to, to do this. And it, it, I, I can't offer that up that the same thing's gonna work for everybody in the room. It's again, one of those things you need to sit down with your financial consultant, your tax advisor, your banker, 
and between the, the two or the three of them, you'll, you'll come up with a really good game plan that'll get you to really what probably the goal for everybody in the room is, is just getting back to that coverage that you had and how do you continue that coverage and keep that in place as, as you go forward. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Brent. So a couple of examples. Again, back to this, back to the lump sum payment. So I use twenty thousand dollars, twenty year financing cost. It's going to cost you an in interest. So twenty thousand. It's going to cost you thirty six thousand one twenty two approximately. So this is just using a hypothetical three percent annual rate. I'm not calculating any tax deductibility. So generally, if it's a second mortgage, the interest is going to be tax deductible. I don't factor that in at all. But twenty thousand is going to cost you thirty six. But remember the opportunity cost. You're actually going to save seventeen thousand and forty-three dollars. You'll have seventeen thousand forty-three dollars left over if you finance it versus take it out lump sum. And the numbers get better. Thirty thousand dollars. It's going to cost you fifty-four, but that'll save you twenty-five thousand. Forty thousand dollars financed will cost you seventy-two, but you save thirty-three. And fifty thousand costs you ninety thousand over twenty years, and you'll save forty-two thousand three sixty. So. And these are, the, these are complex things and you're kind of under the gun because you've got to make a decision fairly soon, but we can help you figure out what's going to be the best. Apple and Group's offices are right downtown. What we've decided to do is between now and September, we're really clearing our schedule out. So we've got um, uh, two conference rooms and we've got room for a third conference room as well. So we're going to make those available. We're right downtown on Houdini Plaza. Easy to get to. Uh, no, a number of faces have been to our office downtown as well. Easy to get in, easy to get out. Uh, Romeo's up in Green Bay, so we're going to make that space available, and Romeo's agreed to come down, so we'll have private space. Uh, again, you can use our space, not a problem at all. Option three, conversion, um, and then possibly option four, which would be to, re to replace or add on to, is just the pay as you go option. A lot of ways to do this. Raise your hand if you have a Wisconsin Employee Trust Fund, pension that you will eventually receive. Should be almost everybody, right? Every family at all. You're in a very unique position because the State of Wisconsin Employee Trust Fund is a well-funded and solvent pension. Not a lot of, well, not everyone is as well-funded as Wisconsin's is. So fingers crossed that still is working out very, very nicely. You have income. You, for, if you're in the Wisconsin Employee Trust Fund, you get Social Security, you will never run out of income. One of the things that we're talking about, though, is if you're taking it from invest, existing investment assets to supplement that income to pay that premium, whether it's on the conversion or whether it's in a different policy as well, the one thing that you absolutely have to be careful of is the excess risk that you have inside of those investment options. It's something we talk again and again and again. Think back to 2008 when the market was not cooperative. Think back to 2009 when your fellow retirees in the Wisconsin Employee Trust Fund had to take benefit cuts temporarily because the value of the pension plan had gone down. Think back to that third, that third thing we, we talked about early on. Just because things are going really well right now, we can't assume that they're always going to be that way. So now is a great opportunity to look and see, do you have excess risk inside of your portfolio? And we see this a lot. If you're depending on your 403B, if you're depending upon inheritance assets, spousal 401K, to finance that monthly premium or that annual premium on a long-term care policy, it would be really inconvenient if the market didn't cooperate with your plans, right? So we always talk about the idea of having just the right amount of risk inside of a portfolio and we can help customize that. Generally for retirees, we really talk a lot about having flexible investment strategies in your portfolio. Again, minimizing risk, make as much as we can along the way. That's a challenge in today's market, but lately it's been doing a lot better. You can also finance from a pension or social security option as well. So those are all options there too. Please, please, please don't neglect everything else. We're talking long-term care insurance today. That's one piece of an entire financial puzzle and we can help address all of those. So it's all of these different pieces that can light up and we can really help to clarify a lot of issues and really be helpful. So I want to thank everyone for coming. We do have some additional materials on the tables. And if you would also be so kind, we have um, an evaluation form as well that if you can just kind of give us feedback and specifically if there's anything that you want to reach out, you want us to reach out to you on with Romeo, with, um, with Brent and with Paul, we can help coordinate that as well. We will be doing a door prize drawing for anyone that does fill out the evaluation forms and leaves those with us as well. 
And then we also have cards out on the table, and we also have tchotchkes from public radio, public television as well. So thank you so much for coming. Again, we're at your service. Thank you very much.